I've been in the HVAC industry for about seven years now, and I've had my fair share of experiences. Some were good, and some were not so good, some were bad. And deriving from those experiences and from the experiences of the techs around me, I decided to make two videos. 10 reasons of why the HVAC field is great and awesome, and 10 reasons of the flip side. You know, what, what is so bad and ugly about the HVAC trade? There's two sides to every coin, right? But in this video, I want to go over 10 reasons why the HVAC field is awesome, why it's good. So in no particular order, let's just start with the all 10. I'll start with number one, and number one is that you don't need to be smart or talented or have a lot of experience to join or start the HVAC career. When I just started my HVAC journey, I went from being an accountant to being an HVAC tech, and I was absolutely not mechanically inclined, and I knew absolutely nothing about any of this stuff. And when I just started, uh, it's a two-year course, after the first semester, that's about three months, first semester of HVAC school, myself and more than half of the class already had a job in the HVAC field. And there were quite a few guys that were like me that had no prior experience. So to get into the field, to get your foot in the door, let's say, you really don't need that much experience. You don't need to be that smart. You just, you just got to get started. In short, if there's a will, there is a way. You'll find a way. But I do want to make one recommendation, and that is don't pick a very expensive school to get your HVAC schooling. If it's very expensive, then chances are you're actually going to get less out of that school than you would from just a you know, community technical college. And that's what happened to me. There was two colleges. I had two options in my area. One was like a prestigious college, and one was just a normal technical college. So the prestigious college, it cost four times more, like straight up four times more than this college. So I picked the technical college, the community college, just because it cost way less and I didn't have to get into debt. I can actually, you know, keep up with the bills from the college and pay my way through it without getting into, you know, any college or student loan debt. Whereas in that college, I definitely would have gotten into debt. And as I was going through school, as I was nearing completion, I learned that this technical college actually had better lab, it had better, you know, hands-on equipment, it had better teachers and pretty much everything than that prestigious college over there. So really all that one had going for it was the big name. And after I finished school, maybe two years later, they actually closed down their HVAC courses because they couldn't get enough students. So if at all possible, try not to accumulate any student loans while you're going to HVAC school, or at least as much as you can. So to summarize, you don't have to be talented or gifted or mechanically inclined Average is enough. The biggest factor is just the willingness to learn. So that was number one. And number two is that you can get an HVAC job anywhere. You can go anywhere in the country and get a heating and cooling job. There's going to be always, you know, there's always going to be at least AC or furnace, one or the other, or in most cases, there's going to be both of them, heating and cooling everywhere you go. Everybody's going to need a furnace. Everybody's going to need an AC or at least one of them. So HVAC jobs, no matter where you move into country, or for that matter, most of the world, you can find yourself an HVAC job. And to top it off, HVAC work cannot be outsourced. So there's never going to be a day where there's going to be a company, you can just call a hotline, and they're going to walk you through how to fix your you know, HVAC unit, your AC or your furnace. That's just not going to happen. To fix it, you're going to have to actually have somebody physically present at your house. So it can never be outsourced. So as far as job security goes, HVAC is not going anywhere. And point number three is that HVAC work never gets dull. If you talk to any HVAC technicians that have 30 or 40 years of experience, you ask them how long did you go to school for, and they usually scratch their head and say, ah, I've been going to school for about 45 years. So challenge-wise, HVAC work never gets dull. It's always interesting. The problems are always different. It's not repetitive. You're not doing the same thing over and over and over again. Every single problem is unique. Every single problem is different. You have to troubleshoot. You have to use your brain. You're definitely not going to get dull with the HVAC field. And moving on to number four, HVAC is generally a well-paid career. I know plenty of people that have master's degrees in other careers, and they make somewhere from sixty to 80000 a year. But at the same time, I know more than plenty of HVAC technicians that make six figures a year, so over a hundred thousand. 
And of course, for most people, that's more than enough to support a family, to pay all the bills, and to buy some toys on top of that. That being said though, I have heard people saying that an HVAC technician's pay is miserable. Now, I disagree with that. That really should not be the case because the demand on HVAC technicians is really high right now. There's a lot of employers looking for people and they can't find them. They're becoming scarce. So if you're an HVAC technician that has experience, you should be able to find a better job. I mean, if you're at a job that's not paying you a lot, there should be plenty of opportunities around you where you can promote yourself to better pay, better benefits, and etc. Which leads me to point number five, and point number five is job security. Now, the HVAC field, like I was just saying, is in high demand right now. When I was going to school, even back then, they were saying that in the next five years, it's forecasted that 50% of the workforce, of the HVAC workforce, is going to be set to retire. And another thing that I'm starting to hear a lot as well is that recently, you know, in 2019, for every five technicians that retire, there's only one that comes onto the field. But I think this covers all the trades, not just HVAC. So right now, there's not a lot of people studying to become a technician for any field for that matter, including HVAC. So going forward, being an HVAC technician is going to be awesome because the demand on HVAC technicians and other technicians and all the other trades are, is going to just skyrocket because there's not enough people studying for that. There's a bunch of guys retiring from the field and not enough coming in. So in the future, talking about job security, instead of looking for a job, I'm sure there's going to be employers looking for you. We're going to be like out for grabs. You know, everybody's going to be fighting for HVAC technicians. And in that case, you can just pick and choose. So whatever employer pays more, whatever the benefits are, the competition is going to go up. The competition in our favor, HVAC technicians favor, the employers are going to try to outmatch each other, who pays more, who gives more benefits, and so on, so on. And I don't know about you, but to me that sounds pretty exciting. And if you're actually a veteran technician that's been doing this for a long time, I'd be curious to hear about your opinion. What do you think about this? In the near future, in the next you know, 5, 10 years, in the HVAC field and the other trades, what are we going to be seeing? Are we going to be seeing super high demand? Or what, is, what do you think is forecasted to happen? It would be awesome if you could share your opinions in the comments below. So as far as job security goes, an HVAC technician is always going to be able to find a job. And number six is that you get to be a hero. Now, I think this mainly applies to residential service work. The other works are not appreciated as much. I mean, they are as well, but residential service, that's, that's where you get the hero feeling. So usually, when people call you out, they're pretty miserable. In the summer, if they're really hot and sweating, they're going to be excited to see you. In the winter, if it's getting really cold and their pipes might start to freeze over and stuff, they are also thrilled to see you. So when you knock on the door, you don't usually you don't even have to knock. When they see you pull up, the door's already open, they're waiting for you. They're like, oh my gosh, you're finally here. I'm so happy to see you. Let me show you where the furnace is. Let me give you some cookies, some coffees. What can I get you? They're just thrilled to see you. So it's kind of a cool feeling to be able to help people out. You know, you do about eight to 10 houses a day. If you're on call, you're doing like over 20. And usually, sure, there's going to be unpleasant customers, but for the most part, people are happy to see you. They're thankful that you fixed their furnace or their air conditioner. So I think it's pretty cool. It's rewarding to be appreciated for what you do once you fix somebody's unit. It's just another cool aspect of my job that I get appreciated for, you know, fixing people's stuff. And number seven is that you just feel good about yourself. You know, when I was going to school for accounting, I felt pretty useless around the house. You know, if your wife tells you, oh honey, the furnace stopped working, you're like, oh crap, I better, we better call somebody and hopefully they can come out here immediately and we don't have to wait for a couple of days. Whereas now, you know, if something breaks in the house, I, I can do it myself. I have, I now have this skill set. I actually feel useful in life. Whereas when I was doing accounting, you know, I felt like, sure, I know numbers and math, but life-wise, I can't do much with my hands. I felt kind of useless as a man, you know, as a head of the household. But now with the skill set that I have, I, I feel great. It's nice to be able to do something with your hands. So when I decided that I wasn't going to do accounting, I wanted to go into a field where I actually use my brains and my hands, not just my brains. So, you know, it was either automotive, uh, electrician, plumbing, or HVAC. I picked HVAC just because it kind of covers everything. And number eight is that HVAC jobs are pretty much economy proof. Even if the economy goes down the drain, things become really bad, when people are really, really hot in the summer, they're still going to want to see you. And in the winter, when it's really, really cold, 
it, having a furnace is a must. It's mandatory. You really have no choice. So the way I see it, an HVAC technician will always have a job regardless of how the economy fluctuates. And let's just jump right into number nine, and that is that HVAC embodies a multitude of different careers or trades into one. And that's kind of what I liked about HVAC. That's why I picked it. When I was picking out a career, I was talking to a journeyman uh, commercial HVAC guy, and I was telling him, you know, my options are either plumbing or a mechanic or an electrician, but I'm not sure which one to choose. So he tells me, why don't you just choose HVAC? I'm like, HVAC, what's that? Back then, I didn't even know what HVAC was. He tells me, oh, it's pretty much furnace and air conditioning. But if you do that field, you're pretty much going to do plumbing, carpentry, appliance repair. You're going to have mechanical, electrical, all of that stuff in one. So once you start doing HVAC, once you get experience in it, you actually get cross-trained in a lot of those other fields as well. So I think that's pretty awesome, and in my opinion, HVAC is the king of all those trades. And the last point is number 10, and the number 10 is actually the same as number 2 in the other video where I talk about the bad things about HVAC. Now, even though some people may see this as something bad, I think it's great. And number 10 is that you get to be alone. A lot of the time, you are alone, which I personally love. As a residential HVAC tech, I go to about, you know, eight houses a day. And between each house, there's a 10, 15, 20 minute drive. So a good three hours in the day, or sometimes even more, depending on how long your drives are, it's just you and the van. You get to drive in the van, listen to a good audio book or some YouTube channel. It's great, I enjoy being alone. And in most cases, once you get to the house, the customer greets you, they take you to your office, essentially the mechanical room or the furnaces or whatever it is that you're fixing and they leave and you're on your own once again just you and the AC or just you and the furnace and once again you're alone and I think that's that's awesome just you and the furnace you get to think in peace and quiet you troubleshoot you figure it out it's kind of a good feeling once you figure out what the problem is you get it fixed you hear that thing fire up it's awesome but that's just my opinion what do you think would it be awesome to work alone by yourself if you're a technician? Is it great to be alone for the majority of the day? Or would you rather be in a social environment where you get to socialize with other people? Well guys, and those were my 10 good points about the HVAC career. If you agree with what I said and maybe perhaps you have something else to add, maybe I missed some highlights of the HVAC career, please let us know in the comments below what I missed. Or if you disagree with some of the points I mentioned, we would also love to hear from you in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to mash that like button on the way out and we'll see you next time. And if you're still here and not in the comment section below, guys, I live in Minnesota and I wanna tell you for sure, winter is coming. So I was thinking of buying this guy's portrait because there's just a lot of truth to it.